Welcome to the Knitting Unicorn Podcast. This is a podcast about knitting, crochet, and other yarny and crafty goodness. My name is Rebecca, and I am the hostess, and it is Saturday, February 17th, and we are in New Hampshire. Um, so last week, I put up the first episode, well, episode and a half, because I forgot some things, of Fiber 101 which is a series of uh, episodes about fiber, different types of fiber, to help educate and make, help you make better decisions when choosing yarn for your projects, if you're not going to use the same yarn that the pattern calls for. Um, so I hope you had a chance to watch it, and I'll try to put the link in somewhere if you haven't. Uh, but it is on my channel, so feel free to go give it a look-see. Um, and then next weekend will be the episode on uh, goats, on cashmere and angora goats. Um, I am heading off to Florida on Saturday, so I'm not sure when that's going to get done, maybe Friday. Um, and then I hope to get a episode, episode six of this podcast. This is episode five. Episode 6, I'm going to try to record in Florida with my best friend Amber because she will be there with me. So maybe we'll do something poolside. Um, so yeah, welcome. Um, I guess I'll start today with, um, I have a hoe. I have nothing finished, but I have a hoe. Uh, I got the kit for the Underwing Cow by Erica Hauser. Um, Haven Fiber Arts did a knit along and dyed up some kits for that. It's a beautiful color work mitten. Looks like this. And uh, that came since the last episode, um, so I haven't had a chance to show it to you yet. I did finish the first mitt. So this is my first mitt. And this is the back. I just adore this so much. So I have to make the second one. Um, I did this on nine inch circulars, uh, but they're currently being used for another project, so I'll talk about that in a second. But this yarn is from Haven Fiber Arts, like I said. This is her tag. And she's on Etsy. And I have, this is the Honeycomb Underwing Kit. And these are my colors. And I just love them so much. So I, um, oh my god, they're crazy squishy and I just, they're great. So, no, I'm actually just looking at this for the first time in the light and seeing that it is almost speckled. I never noticed. Anyway, really cool. I just love this color. Um, and I asked her to dye me up full skeins of each of these for another project, which I'll talk about. Um, but yes, I love these so, 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 so much. They are so beautiful. And they were so much fun to knit. I did them in a couple days. I couldn't stop with the color work. And I think I did a decent job with my floats. I'll show you the back, the inside. Ignore the green, because that's actually the duplicate stitch. But you can see my floats in there. So I kept them pretty neat. Um, I did keep them a little bit looser, but then I blocked it really, really well. So that's why they look so straight. Um, 
uh, because it's color work, it doesn't have a lot of stretch. And I will say that I did not do a gauge swatch for this. I never do gauge swatches for mittens and you know accessories. Um, I just followed the recommended needle and um, cast it on. It's a little small for me. It's almost cutting off my circulation in my thumb and um, it's just, it's tight. So, the sad story is that I don't know exactly what's gonna happen to these. Um, I am debating between ripping them out and doing them in a larger needle size or um, just making the next one and giving it to somebody who has little hands. I do not have little hands. And, um, sorry, just fixing the duplicate stitch. But I don't, I don't mind making the other one. I mean, they're just, they're gorgeous, so. Right now I'm leaning towards making the other one and giving them away and then making myself another pair later on this year. I mean, these would make a fabulous Christmas gift for somebody, so. That's the Underwing Mitt by Erica Hauser, and that is my home. So, and the pattern is really well written. Um, maybe not if you never, ever, ever done color work before, stranded color work. Um, it might be a little daunting, but if you've done any basic color work, you could definitely do this. It looks complicated, but it's not. Her chart is so easy to read. And um, yeah, I, I highly recommend this pattern. And she has some other color work stuff that I love, and I'm definitely going to make more of her patterns. So yeah, that's that. And I'll talk about this in a minute. Um, I don't really have much to say about my nomadic yarn sweater weather sock that I'm doing on the Addy Flip Flexi Flips. Um, I don't, I might have made a little bit more progress since the last time you saw it. I, I maybe like did two stripes. Um, but I got caught up in another pair of socks that I'm going to show you that I love. So these haven't gotten much love. And these may get pushed off a little farther. So my goals, if you don't remember, um, I'm doing the box of socks cal, so I plan on having one pair of socks done a month, maybe more if I can fit it in, but at least one pair a month. And these were supposed to be my February sock, but my February sock is going to be my other one that I'm going to show you. And then I have another yarn that I want to show you that I want to cast on when I'm in Florida, so that might end up being my March sock. And this might just end up being the do it when I can sock. It's just a vanilla sock, so I might just keep it as my vanilla go-to when I'm running around or going to the movies or whatever. Because um, I'm also going to do an afterthought heel, so I don't even have to worry about a heel flap on this one. So that might be that. And again, I'm using the Addy Flexi Flips, which I am really enjoying. So that's these. Um, I like them a lot. Uh, but I did, I broke out, I mentioned before, I broke out the um, nine inch circulars to do the color work mitten and then I forgot how much I enjoyed those. So I cast on a pair of socks with them uh, and I decided to knit these socks in tandem. And um, I don't do magic loops so I can't do two at a time but in tandem I can do I do like a bit and a bit, so I did the cuff and then the cuff and then the leg and the leg and then the heel and the heel, the gusset and the gusset, and now I'm on the feet. So I bought this yarn from Lolo Did It, and it was supposed to be my Super Bowl Patriots cast on. Here's the tabs. Um, but Super Bowl didn't really go the way we wanted it to, so these are now my... Olympic socks, Team USA Olympic socks. And these are Lolo Did It in the colorways Triumph and Sriracha. So these are my socks. So 
So like I said, I'm doing them in tandem. Those are my heel flaps. The heels and toes are in Sriracha, and then the rest of it is in Triumph, and I'm doing the Hermione's Everyday Sock. And um, yeah, so I'm on the feet now. And I am loving this pattern. I'm loving this sock yarn. It's uh, Lolo Did It Everyday Sock Base. And these are the balls of yarn. You can see them balled up. So these are my Team USA socks for the Winter Olympics. That's what I've decided that they're going to be. So good thing my football team has the same colors as my country. Or that would have been a very sad Super Bowl cast on for me. So yeah, I'm, I'm loving these so much and they're knitting up pretty quick. I don't, I haven't done this in tandem in a, in a long time, so and sometimes I'm like, oh my god, I've been knitting these socks forever, and then I realize, well, yeah, but I've got this much done on two socks, not just one. Um, I don't really have second sock syndrome. I usually cast on my second sock right away or within a, a day or so, um, but I thought I would give this a try. So this is a lot of fun, and I definitely recommend the Hermione's Everyday Sock if you haven't done it. Um, this is also the first time I've done a one-by-one -one rib. I think that I might start doing that. I haven't tried them on yet, but my other socks have all been three by one. And as much as I love the way it looks, it doesn't, it's not as stretchy. It doesn't secure the sock as well. So I'm going to give this a whirl and see how that goes. So yeah. Team USA socks. Yay. And then I got a whole skein of this instead of just a mini because I want to make a pair of shorties with the rest of this left over. Um, I don't know what, I'll probably have to do contrast heels and toes, although I might be able to get a full pair of shorties out of this, but we'll see. I might do contrast heels and toes, but um, definitely have enough for a sock, another pair of socks. And these are in my Patriots bag from a single strand studio. This is the deluxe project bag. And I love these bags, as you know. Um, my next whip is, I haven't done anything on this either, so I don't even know why I'm showing it to you. But this is my Raina shawl that I, ah, I'm dropping stitches on apparently. That I cast on for Florida. I wanted this to be my Florida shawl. And I wanted something that I could have in the warmer weather that would be nice and cool because I like to have things draped over my shoulders and my neck all the time. And so I thought this would be nice because it is a linen silk blend. It's a Queensland, Queensland Collection Savannah, and the color is Raindrop. Um, but I got so into the mitt and the Olympic socks that I really haven't done anything on this at all. So we shall see what happens. Um, yeah, we'll see. I, I was planning on working on this last whip I'm going to show you all weekend, but now that I take this out, I'm kind of like, maybe I should finish this. Ah, it is so nice. Ah, well, we'll see what happens. So that brings me to my last whip. And I've talked about this before. This is my light flex sweater. And the body's done. And I started the sleeves. So I've got this sleeve going and you can see the garter detail down the arm. Uh, and this is Lemonade Shop Rhinebeck 2017 colorway um, on the, I think it's just their plain sock base. What is it that I have here? Oh, the tag fell off. Oh well. Well, this is what the hank looks like. It's 
it's just it's so pretty and this is what it looks like knit up and I've had no pooling no issues I did not alternate skeins and I'm quite happy with the way it's turning out um, so yeah I don't I love it um, so I, the last time I talked about it, I had talked about how it was a little bit tight and a little bit short, and I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. But I still have to block it, and I'm going to block it, you know, within an inch of its life. I'm going to block the crap out of it. Um, so it will get a little bit bigger, and um, I gained a bit of weight this year. Some of it was because of medication, and some of it was just because I was lazy. Um, and I hope that when the warm weather rolls around, you know, I'll be more active and I'll, I'll maybe lose a little weight and this will fit, I think, perfectly. So that's the plan right now is to actually finish it, block it and see what happens. If I'm still not happy with it, I'm then going to steak it. I'm not going to rip it out though. That's not an option. So I'm going to finish it, see how I feel. And if I'm still not satisfied, it will be steaked. Um, yeah. So, this is what I've been working on this weekend, but now I feel like I should switch to the shawl and try to get that done. But I've decided, so, okay, hold on, back up. So my goals this year were to do the box of socks cal, so 12 pairs of socks, one pair a month, and then I had four sweaters. Well, technically it's three sweaters and one really big shawl. And this is sweater one. And so just for me to stay on track, I need to have this finished by the end of the month. So that's 10, 11 days. Um, and finish the socks. And then I'll be on track for the my projects for the year. Um, so that's why I didn't work on the shawl really. So. I'm also, so, okay, that being said, I did work on other things this month, and I'm trying not to feel bad about it and not to be too crazy about deadlines because they're arbitrary. I put them on myself. That's stupid. Um, and they're more of a guideline for what I want to accomplish this year, but I also need to, you know, in moderation, knit on the things I'm feeling passionate about. And right now I'm passionate about getting this sweater done. This thing's been on the needles since Rhinebeck. And I really want to finish it and see how, what I feel, how I feel about it after it's blocked and then move on. Um, so yeah, working on things that I am passionate about and that I'm feeling right now. And right now I'm feeling the sweater. I'm also feeling the socks because I love those socks. Um, so yeah, so that's that for whips and hose. Like I said, I don't have any finished objects right now. So I want to move on to future knitting. So, um, I'm bringing these two projects with me to Florida because I will be there until March 6th. So if I get my other stuff done, I want to cast these on. So I have to cake up all this yarn this week to bring with me. But the next projects that I'm starting for March, my second pair of socks, and I was going to do a different yarn for March, but then I had like a duh moment and realized that I'm going to Universal Studios and I'm going to Harry Potter because I mean, there's really no other reason to go to Universal. I'm spending three days at Harry Potter, because, the, and last September I did for my birthday the Teeny Button Studios Harry Potter Yarn Club, and I love Teeny Button Studios, her yarn's awesome, and I don't often do yarn clubs because I'm usually on a yarn diet, uh, but for my birthday I did this one, and uh, it could not have been more perfect because I love pinks and purples. Also, one of my most favorite things from Harry Potter are pick me puffs. And so the colorway for the Harry Potter Yarn Club Teeny Button Studio September was a puffle of puff skeins. And it's based on the 
uh, Pygmy Puffs. This is Teeny Button Studios. And it's like all these variegated pinks with these pops of dark purples and dark green speckles. And it is gorgeous. So I thought that this would be a great sock to cast on to bring with me to Universal because obviously I'm gonna bring my knitting to the parks. So I'm really excited about that. So this is gonna be my March sock and I will cast these on in Florida. Maybe before if I finish the other sock, we'll see. But definitely when I get there and I will definitely have some pictures of me knitting these in Universal. So yes, very, very much love this. So that's the March sock. And then the March, well, it's more like a Q2 sweater. I'm gonna cast this on for March, but I don't have to finish it until July. Um, but I'm doing the Breathing Space by Vera Velmaki. And this is the, what it looks like from the back. And it's got these short rows, so then it has this asymmetrical shape. And I just love this so much, and I think it'll be very flattering on my body type. And so when I was at Rhinebeck, I, actually I was at Indie Untangled, I bought the yarn for this there. And I got the Spun Right Round Classic Sock um, in Secret Handshake and Reaper's Rags. So this is Reaper's Rags, and I don't, it's showing up a little dark. Oh, wait. Maybe you can see it here. It's a very tonal charcoal gray. There we go. That's better. Um, and then Secret Handshake is this blue with just speckles of everything. There's pink, orange, green, yellows, reds, everything. Um, so this is just gorgeous. And these are gonna be my stripes, and this is gonna be my main color. So I'm really excited to cast that on as well. I'll probably only get through the top of the raglan and separate for the sleeves, um, if I even start it at all when I'm out there. But uh, I, think, I think that'll be a really fun sweater. So uh, I should probably swatch for it, but really want to. I didn't swatch for this and yes it's a little small but I also gained weight so I think if I lost a few pounds it would fit perfectly so you know. Anyway moving on I have some acquisitions. Oh wait no I have one more thing. So I also am doing Knit Along, the Unicorn Knit Along which starts in March and um, I will talk about that more at the end, but um, my project for the unicorn knit along is the Unini the Magic Unicorn from Dunkelgrun. And I got the pattern you can get on Ravelry, um, and, but I did get a kit. She had a limited number of kits that I got. I showed this before, but I'll show it again. So this is what came in the kit. This is the body. This is the hair, this is the legs, and the feet. And this is the horn. And um, this is done in her Organic Merino DK, and it is um, hand dyed with natural dyes, so. Um, I may cast this on as well. Bef I'm going to bring it to Florida just in case. Hmm, we'll see. And I will show you the bag it's in afterwards because that's part of my announcements. So, moving on to acquisitions. Um, first things first, I haven't shown my pin collection. This is not all of my pins, but these are my favorite pins. So. Ah! I'm definitely on the enamel pin train, so I wanted to show these to you. 
I got some that I love. So, of course I have the knitting unicorn, duh. And then this is the sheep from Another Yarn, which is a shop I go to in Burlington, Mass. Of course I have my Shawl Society pin, and my Grocery Girls pin, and my One Stitch at a Time pin. I got this from Espastrico online. I got something else I'm really excited to show you, but we'll get there. Um, Andre Sue Knits, the floral sheep. Oh my God. If you have not seen the rug she made in this pattern, you need to go find her on Instagram. It is amazing. And she made a sheep pin out of it. I am so excited. I love it so much. So beautiful. And of course, my yarn snob pin from Lemonade Shop because, you know, we're all yarn snobs. And then this one I just got from the Nerd Bird Makery. And this is Nevertheless She Knitted which is awesome for a million reasons. Um, but yeah, I love that. And I also have in the same vein, where is it? I have my Nasty Woman. I got this from a shop in Rhinebeck and I just, I loved it so much. And then I have my Lemonade Shop pin. And this is my Cavalier King Charles Spaniel pin because I have a Cavalier. And I think that's it for pins at the moment. Well, actually, that's not true. No, that's all I have to show you today. I did just order from Teeny Button Studios her little fox pin because it's the cutest. And I'm hoping to make a Knitting Unicorn pin uh, this year. So we'll see what happens. So the other thing I got from Espastrico, which is in Montreal, if you don't know, is this mug. Knitting Fuel. It is gigantic. This holds at least 24 ounces of coffee. At least. With room for cream. I mean, insanely large cup, and I love it. So this is my new favorite mug. So that's what I got there. And then I mentioned that my local yarn store, so I have another yarn in Burlington is technically not my local yarn store. I go there when I can because it's really close to my office. But my local yarn store is um, Pintock and Pearl, and they were in Exeter, New Hampshire. They just moved to Northampton, and they had a grand opening party last weekend, and they gave away these super cute little bags. And they had um, a tape measure and some fabrics and some pencils, I love pencils. Um, I think that's it. Uh, and they're really cute. And this is my new notions bag, that's what I'm using it for. And then I bought, while I was there, um, the cutest needle gauge ever. I showed this on Instagram, but if you missed it, it says knit free or die. <laughs> so if you don't know, the New Hampshire motto is live free or die. So it says knit free or die. And that's the state of New Hampshire. So this is so cute, I had to have that. And then, one of the other things I've been really, really wanting is a, ah, well, a Knitter's Keep from Kogo Knits. So this is such a great little tool. It has this little bag that it comes with. And it's um, it's a slap bracelet. So come on, 80s and 90s kids, slap bracelet with this gigantic magnet on it. And I can keep all my stuff on here. I've got my stitch markers. I've got my little fixing tool. I've got my darning needle. And it's just everything's right there because I can't tell you how many times I have lost 
one of these um, stitch fixing tools. I have gone through so many of these. This is my third one from Coco Knits. I've already lost the one that came in the um, knit kit tool. Do I have it here? Yeah. The knit kit. This is this is awesome. If you don't have one of these, this is awesome. It's got all these things in it, but on the side here, there's a little stitch fixer tool that clips in. It's gone. I can't find it anywhere. It's so sad. Um, so this, now I can't drop these things and let my sofa eat it up anymore because I'm telling you, my sofa eats up everything. There are probably a million stitch markers in there along with all these other things. So very excited to have this and then I don't lose anything anymore. Um, so that was my first purchase that, oh my god, I'm so happy I have this. And when I'm like on the plane and stuff, traveling, and I'm knitting and everything's here. So great. Um, so yay. And then it also came with, it came with 10 opening stitch markers. So these are like the um, light bulb ones. And then it came with 10 large stitch markers, two cable needles, two tapestry needles, and 10 little stitch markers, which are those little ones. And then the stitch tool I bought myself, but it works with it because it's also nickel plated. And it's just such a great thing to have. So if you can get your hands on one, I highly, highly recommend it. I love it. And then I don't know if I mentioned last time, but, um, I do the Mystery Yarn Tour um, club at my shop, uh, Pintuck and Pearl, and it's six months of the year. You Every month we meet, we have like a sip and stitch kind of a thing on the weekend, and we get a skein of yarn and a new pattern, and we do the pattern together. And last time we got... A skein of yarn from Ba Yarns, La Jolla Ba from Ba Yarns, and we were allowed to change colors. And I really liked the color I got, but there was another color that I just adored. But I liked both, and I couldn't decide. And I, like I said, I'm kind of on a yarn diet. I'm trying to knit everything from stash. So it, pretty much, yeah, everything I've showed you so far, I've already had in stash. This is the first. Okay, no, that's not true. The kit for Haven Fiber Arts I bought this year. But that kit and this yarn is all I've bought so far this year for yarn. And that's really good for me. But so I went to the grand opening for the shop and they everything was on sale. So I got this 10% off. So I got the um, Ba La Jolla yarn, and this is their exclusive January 2017 colorway, uh, 2017, 2018 colorway. Um, so they do monthly exclusives, and oh my god, I just love this so much. And it's just, oh my god, look at these. I had to have this and it's not like it's something I can just get whenever I want I mean it's exclusive there was literally three left in the shop and if I didn't get it I might never get it and that would be tragic so I bought this and my husband was really nice and told me that you know he gave me a little budget because he knew I was excited for the grand opening party and <sighs> told me I could get a little something so yay me so I got that. Um, yeah, and that's it for acquisitions because I'm being good. And so I guess that brings me to announcements. Uh, I mentioned that I'm doing the un Knitting Unicorn Knit Along. So it's hashtag Knitting Unicorn Cal. And it technically starts March 21st and goes until 
June 21st, so it's spring equinox to summer solstice. Um, but it's very loosey-goosey. It just has to do something that's related to unicorns, whether it's unicorn color work or a unicorn stuffy or maybe it's um, a unicorn inspired colorway in the yarn you're using or the company of yarn is has to do with unicorns, whatever. I, I, I just want to have fun with it and whips are allowed so you are certainly welcome to cast on whenever if you haven't already. Um, like I showed you what I'm doing and I might cast that on uh, well, I'm on vacation, and um, I mean, obviously, I'm not eligible for a prize, but um, yeah, so definitely check it out. There's a thread on the Ravelry group, and there's all the information there. And uh, yeah, so there will be prizes, and that's what I want to show you. So, Owls and Orchid on Instagram, she makes the cutest charms and progress keepers ever out of the little like clay and she custom made for this cow these little unicorn progress keepers get closer to you how cute is this that's one, and that's two, and then this is the last one, but this one's for me, so I'm sorry. Look at her. She's got roses in her hair. I love it. So she made these for us, and these two are going to be prizes. I know they seem like little tiny nothing prizes, but these things are crazy expensive, so um, they're actually really nice prizes. Um, they are, the colors are based on the exclusive Knitting Unicorn project bags that are going up in the Single Strand Studio shop on Etsy in March. And one of the bags will be um, a prize. And these are coming with a exclusive hand dyed skein of yarn from uh, Flying Fin Yarns and all the colors match they're all coordinated and I will have those skeins to show you when I get back from vacation they're being dyed up as we speak um, but they're all the colors match and then they'll also be in this bag if you buy it or win it um, the a code to get the snip snap socks pattern on Ravelry from Jen Stack. So, this is the bag. Oh my god, it's just the cutest ever. And I don't think you can tell on the video, but these little bits and these little bits are gold, like metallic. And the horns on the unicorns are metallic. Um, and I just love these so much. And the inside are navy polka dots. And it's snap shut with little these little pink snaps. And I really like that because I don't love a drawstring top all the time. I mean, I love my fringe supply bag, and that's a drawstring. But normally I don't go for drawstrings. But zippers can be scary when it comes to yarn. Um, and so the snaps, I'm really liking the snaps. Um, I have this other bag, too, that I'm keeping my um, shawl in. And this also has the snaps, and I really like that. Um, and I actually had been using this when I was doing the color work mitts so I could have the different colors coming out of all the openings. So each opening, if you keep it snap shut, you could have a different thread coming out of each one so your stuff doesn't get tangled. Um, it's actually called the Untangled Project Bag. Um, and you can get this bag on their shop, a single strand studio in other fabrics but this fabric there will only be a limited number of them available in the shop in March and they are kits sort of you don't have to make the pattern with the yarn that came with it they're they're they don't really go together they're just we wanted to give a few different things 
Um, so there'll be a skein of yarn that matches this. There will be the snip snap socks pattern and the bag. And there may be knitting unicorn buttons that I'm going to have made up. Um, I just haven't done that yet, so we'll see about that. Um, so yes, one of these kits will be one of the prizes for the cow, along with two of these super cute unicorn charms, um, and probably some other prizes that I don't have yet. But as I get them, I will update you about that. Um, so definitely come join our cow. It's super easy and, like I said, really loosey-goosey. Like, th there's very, very little rules. Um, the Prizes will be randomly drawn from the FO and chatter threads. Right now there's only a chatter thread. I ha I'm not going to open the FO thread until um, at least March 21st. Uh, but I will do random generator for those. And yeah, that's it. So have fun with it and just find some really cool unicorn stuff. Because I love unicorns, obviously. Uh, speaking of that, um, I always talk about my unicorn hair and... You can see it looks different this week. I had it done and it's like much bluer and more purpley now. Can you see this? So I've been calling myself the knitting mermaid all week because this is way more mermaid than unicorn, but whatever. I love it. Definitely looks very different in different light. The picture that they took in the salon, it was much more like seafoam green colors, uh, which is fine. I love it just as it is. Uh, yeah, so I think that's it. Um, really excited to get out of here and go to the warm weather in Florida and do some fun stuff. I'm probably going to need a vacation from this vacation because there's seven of us going, three kids, four adults. 11 days of parks and craziness and it's going to be exhausting but it's going to be so much fun so yay and um yeah that's pretty much all i got so join the cal check out the ravelry group subscribe to this podcast check out the fiber 101 videos because those are those are i like doing those a lot i'm really nerdy so definitely something I'm passionate about. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys around. Have a good one.